So whilst you're here in Bulgaria, here is a list of food and drinks you must try that definitely could change your life for better or for worse. They've definitely had an effect on my life. More about that as we go through the video. This compilation are opinions of tourists, locals and foreigners that live here in Bulgaria. Not just my opinion. Over the last eight months, I've been asking you guys on Facebook, asking them on my YouTube videos, and I've also asking tourists and locals on the streets. Do you like the Bulgarian food? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not so different from ours, actually. Yeah, it's very yeah, it's very it's quite this is so yeah, good food, really good. So we have moussaka. It's uh, uh, very nice. Also, so you can try the cold soup called uh, tarator. I want to give a big thanks to all those people who got involved and give me some answers. With over 5,000 answers, I'm very grateful. But I'm not so grateful for all the work that I had to do to put it all together. So before we kick off, I just want to point out some of this food are not actually traditionally orientated and made in Bulgaria. This is because of hundreds of years of different cultures passing through Bulgaria, they've adapted some of their food. So they're more classical kind of Bulgarian food. I also want to point out that these are in no particular order. So let's get right into it. Elenski but. You know, the direct translation of this is actually deer leg, but it's nothing to do with deer. It's actually a pork leg. I was so happy to find out Bulgaria had their own version of Spanish Serrano ham or Italian Parma ham. I was very happy. Made in a very similar way of curing the leg in salt, but they store it in oak barrels. Then when the curing process is finished, they wash it with hot water, also with a bit of sauerkraut, sour cabbage liquid, and then they leave it to hang for six months minimum. A lovely little meze to go with your wine. Kappa Ma, originating in the Bansko region of Bulgaria, this hearty winter dish is actually one of my favorites too. Made with sauerkraut, chicken leg, pork meat and sausage together with spices. It's cooked in a pot known as a guvec and left to simmer in the oven for hours. I actually have my own version of this recipe on my channel. If you're checking the playlist of the Bulgarian recipes, you'll find it there if you want to check it out. Next up, the Bulgarian pink tomato. This is definitely one that changed my life. Growing up in England as a kid, I hated the tomatoes. There was no taste and the texture was very strange, but that's nothing like a Bulgarian rose tomato. From the very first taste is an absolute explosion of flavor in the mouth. This has completely changed my opinion of tomatoes and I always looked forward to the next Bulgarian summer for when the tomatoes are coming around again. And also because it's very popular in Bulgaria to grow your own fruits and vegetables, it actually inspired me to start to grow my own. To grow your own Bulgarian rose tomato is amazing. And then the taste after is even better. That got me into a horticulture. Maybe food like this can get you into growing your own things. What did you think about the first time that you ate a Bulgarian pink tomato? Put it in the comments below. Moussaka. So this is not to be confused with the Greek moussaka that everybody else knows. Though it's made in a very similar way, it doesn't have the eggplant of the Greek moussaka. It has pork mince, onions, carrots, potatoes, and it's topped with a yogurt, egg, and flour topping. Then it's baked in the oven to absolute perfection. Often, it's served with a bit of extra yogurt on the side. Which one is your favorite, the Bulgarian or the Greek moussaka? Let me know down on the bottom. Bulgarian yogurt. Speaking of yogurt, Bulgarian yogurt is one that you must try. Actually, it is thought that the yogurt was actually invented in Bulgaria by a guy called Dr. Stama Gregorov. He found the bacteria that was then added to the milk to create this lovely product. Now it's a little bit different than the Greek one. I find it to be a little bit more sour, but that's exactly for my flavor and less creamy like the Greek one. And it's actually super easy to make. I have a recipe again in the Bulgarian recipe playlist on my channel that you can go and check out. Maybe you can start to make your own. Have you ever made your own yogurt? Let me know down in the comments below. It's about that time that I'm going to ask you just to tap that thumbs up button for me. Help this video spread for other people to see and enjoy like you. Shkembe chorba. So this is made from tripe, otherwise known as stomach from the cow. This has got the whole country 50-50. It's a bit of a Marmite situation. 
A lot of people love it, a lot of people don't. And even the ones who didn't love it still advise that you must try it because you need to see which side of the fence that you sit on. Served with chili, garlic and vinegar is quite often known as a very good hangover cure. So at least that's one reason to try. Ovcharska salad. I think it was obvious sometime along the line that there should be a salad on this list. Surprisingly, you probably thought it'd be the Shopska, but more people decided Ovcharska, which is shepherd salad. Made with tomatoes, cucumbers, bell peppers, onions, mushrooms, ham, and Bulgarian white cheese. Though I have seen some recipes using the yellow cheese also. It is then dressed with oil and red wine vinegar dressing. I'm a massive fan of this salad. And it also seems like Taste Atlas is a big fan too. They named it the number one salad of the whole world, fighting off the likes of Greek salad, Niçois from France, and the Caesar salad. And it's amazing summer compliment to that glass of rakia. Rakia. There's nothing quite like in the summertime a nice salad with fresh, beautiful Bulgarian ingredients and a glass of homemade rakia. This is another one that has changed my life. It's very popular and traditional to make your own rakia here in Bulgaria. Rakia is a kind of schnapps made from different fruits, often made from grape, plum or apricot, but can be made from nearly any kinds of fruits. Nearly every village has their own little distillery or a kazan as it is known. I was so fascinated about how you can make your own alcohol I've learned to do it myself also now. So the tradition has been passed down to me. Which unusual fruits have you tried rakia from here in Bulgaria? Let me know down below. Sirene. This white cheese is famous all over the Balkans and in Greece, but Greeks call it feta cheese. Though it's not exactly the same as feta cheese, I find that this cheese is a little bit more salty and again with that little tang that I love. Often put on salads and inside baked goods, you will never find a Bulgarian fridge without it. Boza. This is another kind of Marmite situation. You either love it or you hate it. And this has also had an effect on my life too. Simply because it's a wheat based drink that tastes just like Weetabix. Now, growing up as a kid, I used to love the Weetabix, but now after tasting Boza, I get a real strange thought about this liquid kind of Weetabix flavor. And now I cannot even look at a bowl of Weetabix again. Barnita. This dish is quite often enjoyed for breakfast. Made from phyllo kind of pastry, there is many different flavors that you can have, but the most typical is with the white cheese. There are hundreds of bakeries that are serving this every morning all over any village, town or city that you're in in Bulgaria. So that means no excuse for you not to try. If you've tried Barnitzer, which one is your favorite? Mishmash. This is the exact dish and a great ambassador of the reason why you should stop tasting food with your eyes and taste it with your taste buds. Even though this dish looks like the regurgitated dinner from last night, the taste is absolutely amazing. Made with eggs, tomatoes, peppers, onions, garlic, white cheese, and parsley, you're gonna be so surprised how good this tastes rather than the way it looks. And when it's made from ingredients coming from the garden, even better. I'd love to know what you thought about Mishmash the very first time that you saw it. Let me know down below. Sharanaso, translated as colorful salt. This combination of cumin, paprika, fenugreek leaves, salt, thyme, and chubritsa, otherwise known as summer savory, is usually sprinkled upon bread, cheese, vegetables, and potatoes. This can change the way that you have chips or french fries for the rest of your life. When you sprinkle this on one time, you're never gonna go back to just regular salt on those chips. Terator. Last but not least, this wonderful cucumber yogurt cold soup with additional ingredients of dill, garlic, and walnuts is a welcome addition in this hot summertime. Even if you don't like cold soups, 
you definitely need to try this one and you won't regret it on that hot summer's day. Did I miss anything off? If you know something that you think people should try, please let us know that in the comments below. Also, if you want to check out some of them recipes, go now. I will send you to this playlist here of the, my Bulgarian recipes and you can check out some of the recipes I have there. I'll see you over there.